Oh, man. What an episode of Overreaction Monday we're about to unpack for you. Rich Eyes and Chris Brockman right here. As always, brought to you by our friends at Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Restrictions apply when you use it. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code OVERREACTION for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Holy smokes, yes, Chris Brockman. Sir. So we had six teams win their first game of the season mm-hmm. on Sunday. Six. And we had the number of undefeated teams sliced in half, half. on Sunday. Half. Yeah. So there's lots to overreact oh, there's to. There's so much to overreact to. I can't wait to hear what's on your overreaction addled mind. <laughs> hit it, hit it, hit it. That was terrible. That was crap. That was garbage. This place sucks. Overreaction. Mondays. Monday. Christopher Brockman. Rich the floor Eisen. is yours. Oh, baby. Let's just start. <laughs> There's only one place to start, Rich. We got to start in Dallas. Of course we are. Of course we do. My Just so we start. <laughs> Just so we start properly. <laughs> yes. We left yesterday's previously on Overreaction Monday. Previously. We end the show, as you know, always uh, predicting uh-huh. what we will be overreacting to the next week. Right. I said the Cowboys are in trouble <laughs> is what we would be overreacting to. Yes. And here you are. And here we are. Playing the type. <laughs> on brand. Playing the hits. Really? What do you got? The Cowboy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You can't even say it. The Cowboys not signing Derrick Henry is the biggest whiff of Jerry Jones's ownership. Wow. There's a lot of whiffs. There's a lot of whiffs. None bigger than letting Derrick Henry. The biggest walk whiff of Jerry Jones's ownership is allowing whatever happened between him and Jimmy to uh, send uh, him uh, packing. But they had already won no. championships there. You talk okay? to every, you, you have met. Great. I, I, I've met a lot of met, them. You've met. I've met a lot of them. Two thirds, if not all the triplets. Okay. Yeah, through through all, the, ten, all the 10 years of the, fra- of the flagship. Yes. Yes. And you know. However. They all believe that this conversation. Sure. Excuse me. They would all believe that this conversation of the Chiefs being able to be the first three P team in the history of the NFL would not be operative right now because they would have done it. I get it. You know it. But this wasn't a team that had never won. And then Jimmy Johnson walks. Okay. They had already won. Mm-hmm. Okay. And when it's been 30 years since the last one, yes, and you claim to be all in. And then you don't sign Derrick Henry. Then the team that did comes into your house and absolutely punks you while he runs wild. Yes. That's the biggest whiff. And then you go after the game and claim that you couldn't afford him when you are the franchise worth the most dollars. Well, you know, and you have the cap space. Well, that's the, that's what he would push back on. And what he laughed about when the, 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 do we have that soundbite? If we'll, we'll tee it up. I know that we're not, we don't normally do the soundbite thing here on Overreaction Monday, but since you brought it up, you'll hear he chuckles, okay, <laughs> when somebody follows up by asking him why you couldn't afford him, yeah. okay? And so this is after the Ravens and Derrick Henry runs all over. And it's clear, it's clear, as your point, that the Cowboys don't have the other aspects of an offense to take the pressure off of the Dak to CD Lamb right. combination. Right. That right now everybody has circled CD Lamb and through three games, the guy hasn't really gone off yet. And last year, you know, I guess what well, everything is kind of the same and it was working last year to the point where it's not working very well through the first three games this year. This is the Jerry Jones soundbite you're referring to. Watching Derrick Henry do what he did, it didn't make you rethink your approach to the run game? We couldn't afford that. Why not? Because you you could. I I don't know. Why can't you buy a mansion when you live in a different kind of house? We couldn't afford it. We can't make that all fit. It's simple as that. 
Now, caponomics would push back and say you can always make something fit. You got to mortgage something in the future or you got to cut somebody else or you got to just change your plan. So you know how I feel about this. You're kind of baiting me into agreeing with you. A little bit. You know how I asked Derek Henry. We've been talking about this for months. In April, we asked Derek Henry, did the Cowboys never right. really knock on your door? And, and he confirmed it. Yeah, they confirmed okay. it. And you then saw how Dallas falls to one and two because they can't stop the run, and then Derrick Henry runs all over them. The biggest whiff of Jerry Jones's career is letting Jimmy Johnson go or firing him and bringing that about. That's end-all, be-all. And then, of course, the 30 years after that, taking as long as he took to actually put the guy in the ring of honor. That's the biggest whiff of his career. This is not that. And it's still too early to see. We can s sense that Dallas is not going to be as good this they're, year as they were last year. circle the drain okay, soon. Okay, so I understand that. We're assuming that. All right. But I said that we were going to overreact to them being in trouble this week because I'm still considering it an overreaction. It's too early to bury the Dallas Cowboys this year. You think they make the playoffs? The rest, why not? Why not? Who's running away with this conference, Chris? Who's even running away with the division? Running with the conference? Who's the, even Minas running away Minnesota, from the division? Minnesota is about to. And Philly, you know... They, uh, they were, they were, look at you trying to they spin were it. Like, can you spin it facing disaster right in the face? Are you going to pass out from spinning in New Orleans? And, are you dizzy? And they said not today. Okay. Okay. No one's running away with it yet, pal. What if Washington wins on Monday? We're taping oh, this before. Gosh. Okay. Okay. Great. Just keep saying. going. All what right. else? All right. All right. I'll tell you where it's not going. Well, <laughs> I like your transitions. Sometimes they catch me off guard is Tennessee. Will Levis is the next young quarterback on bench watch. I agree. I agree. You know what made me think that too? And again, I don't know his coaching style. I don't know what was it is. It, what was it last week? When, yeah, when, when you could read his Callahan lips like, what, said, the, F what the F were you doing? What the F were you thinking? Or something like that. Yeah. It's way too it's not loose it's with not, the football. It's, it's very cavalier. He has and gone, Rich, he's gone, uh, what, pick six in three straight games? We call that going full shop, and you never go full shop. You shob. don't want to go full shop. I, 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 this one would, wouldn't surprise me because, again, you know, Brian Callahan – didn't draft the kid. Right. And, you know, he's talented enough. He's talented enough. And this week they he he goes to he returns to the moment where he began to really ascend last year, or at least get get enough of a hold on the job that Brian Callahan, I'm sure his interview with the Tennessee Titans management group, um, centered around what do you, what's your plan for Will Levis and how do you mm -hmm. make it work? But, I mean, as much as you coach, like, in the moment, if he's too cavalier, I'm not saying he doesn't want to win. I'm not saying he's not focused on cutting down the turnovers. But in the moment, you just – it's too impulsive. Yeah. And then uh, uh, until he dials back the impulse, uh, I, I do believe they're going to give him a run here in Miami. And if he does it again and this team well, is clearly not lose. winning because they, yeah. keep on, they keep on having to deal with the lack of – um, consistency in the short fields or even worse, the pick sixes, then, I mean, Mason Rudolph is sitting there, bud. Yeah. If they lose to Miami this week, that down to the third quarterback, I mean, you're talking about Snoop Huntley and and your boy Tim Boyle playing. I mean, that's that, that, that's slim pickings. My boy you Tim know, there's Boyle. There's no way they should lose to Miami yeah. this week, but we'll see. So, but I, I, I don't think you're overreacting that at all. I think that's spot on, as a matter of fact. Hmm. What else? Uh, a guy who, uh, <laughs> oh, Rich, oh. MVP Sam is back. MVP Sam is uh, back. MVP Sam is back. He's going to be MVP finalist this season. All right. That's an Sam overreaction. Sam Darnold. Okay. 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 All right. Come on. Name me a quarterback playing better than Sam Darnold I, right now. I can't. I can't. But you yourself remember when he was in Carolina. It was not that long ago. 2021. And we were like, we were going so high a register. They were looking around here for helium. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> that's all we were talking he about. Looks all fantastic. All September long, when it was just like, look at how the Jets blew it. There he is yep. in Carolina. Yep, yep he's found yep. his new home. New home. He's not going to go anywhere except further into the 
Wild Blue Yonder with the Carolina Panthers, and he was playing like an MVP, and then all right. But you want to talk about who's running okay. away in the NFC. Uh, Minnesota, I think, for real, top to bottom, is a really, I really am, good team. I am not saying Minnesota can't take this 3-0 and start and springboard it into a division run and potentially deeper. And I'm not saying Sam Darnold can't continue to play successful football. What I'm saying is that by the end of the day, right now, you're saying Sam Darnold will wind up in the top five. Top five. When, hold on a second, as we established on the flagship show today, that through this points-challenged September, mm -hmm. this illegal procedure palooza September. Ugh, brutal. Okay. This uh, run mentality and defense. A lot of defense, a lot of low-scoring games. September, okay. right? A lot of field goals September. Yep. That based on where we're seeing it right now, I wouldn't be surprised to see a defensive player and a running back finish in the top five of a voting for an MVP. And at this point in time, I would say TJ Watt and Saquon Barkley have a better chance to finish in the final five than, than Sam Darnold. Throughout the whole season? I think we have yet to see what uh, Josh Allen can continue to do. I think we've yet to see Joe Burrow's Put it together. I think Josh Allen's Josh, top five right Joe now. Joe Burrow, what he did in, in Cincinnati. Well, I understand they be, they he turned better it win over on Monday. They better be Washington Kansas City. on Monday. I understand that. But Joe Burrow's, don't discount him and other quarterbacks putting it together. Okay. You know? I think Sam's going to be there. I, I, Me I, and Jordan Palmer. I'd love to see it. The bus. I know. I'd love to see it. But you saying that right now, I think, is an overreaction. Yeah, that's the idea. I understand that's the idea, <laughs> but I'm pushing back on that. Okay, okay. Uh, you went from I like what you, I see. You, you like went from spinning saying. to reasonable to semi reasonable so far. All right, we're gonna on this pod. We're gonna spin some more. Okay. Uh, in the 2024 NFL draft, what was the team that most needed a quarterback that didn't get one? Giants. Bingo. Who'd they take instead? Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors, Rich, is so good. That the Giants will end up keeping Daniel Jones beyond 2024. Ooh, that is, that is, uh, so Malik Neighbors saves Daniel Jones. Correct. I still don't believe it. <laughs> They've been awesome through three games, man. No, I, I, and I, I mean, they single handedly beat the Browns yesterday. The, well, uh, that, on that Sunday. shot we just showed on our, video version again if you listen to us we also post this show on youtube shoot it like a tv show that shot we had of him high pointing a ball in the corner of the end zone in cleveland mm -hmm. what he did after that high point was more impressive which was pirouette in the air and get both feet down yeah, yeah yeah he's in he's amazing he's amazing i thought you were gonna say malik neighbors is better than uh, marvin harrison well, Jr. i was gonna say he was gonna win offensive rookie of the year but that, i don't think that's an overreaction i think him saving daniel jones is, is an overreaction is more, is, uh, is more our speed here daniel jones is gonna have to perform daniel jones played really well on sunday did, and i did not go higher register he played really well you you must have been driving to the Rams and Niners game when he was, when from the end zone he <laughs> was trying possible. to avoid a sack and hold on to it too long and flipped it up in the air back to the center of the field like a flying like a floating right, duck right. and he was lucky that it hit the ground. Well, incomplete. Looks like an incompletion in the Listen, box score. Daniel Jones has got an incredible skill set. I don't think we can deny that. Okay? We saw it in the playoff win in yep. Minnesota. I've said it multiple times. He looked like Colin Kaepernick in that game where yep. he was unstoppable Agreed. in the air and unstoppable on the ground. Agreed. And he had someone like Saquon to be his, you know, running mate. You're saying neighbors is his running mate right now. Neighbors is. His dude. And I understand that, but I, I still think the giants need to see another playoff win and run out of him. Um, to, for him to be st still in New York next year. I, I like I said, the I think, I think they beat the Cowboys this week. Boy, now that's another overreaction. Talk about two teams going in the opposite directions okay. right now. All right. I'll I would I would take that right now. I would take it right now. You think Dallas wins? Oh yes. That's I what do. you're taking? Yeah. I do believe so. Hey, listen. Uh, I don't know. And Nothing I, about Dallas this. has shown me they can they can even hang. I understand this, because again, I'm gonna get so much crap and I'm gonna have to ignore my X feed two Sundays from now. Two Sundays from now, I'm going to be at the microphone in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for yep. NFL Network's coverage of the Week 5 Sunday opener. 
the fourth window, the Whoa. blessed fourth window, uh, the blessed 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 a.m. Pacific oh, I love waking window. up to football. I will be calling Jets Vikings. And obviously everybody knows I grew up a Jets yeah, fan. But that's I talk a, about the Jets all game. the time. And, and, and everybody always assumes the announcers are rooting against their team to begin with. So I'm going to have some headwinds calling that game. And I'm not look, looking forward to that. I'm just going to have to keep my head out. But you understand all that matters to me. All that matters to me. It's a good game. Damn straight. I get it. When Sam Darnold had it, got got uh, Daniel Hunter running to him and uh, and get flagged for hitting him, and he had to leave for a play, it was like, I was uh, freaking out. Uh-oh. Okay? Because I want Sam healthy. I'd love to have the Vikings 4-0. and No offense to the Packers, who they're playing this week. Yep. I'd love to have the Jets 3-1. That'd be great. No offense to the D- Denver Broncos, and that's be- not because I'm a so-called Jet fan. <laughs> I want this t- game to be great. <laughs> so when I'm saying to you that I think the Giants are losing to the Cowboys – and that Daniel Jones is not longed for this team. I want the Giants to win every damn game up until Munich. And when Andy Dalton that showed week? up. Is that week 10? That's, uh, yeah. Okay. That's the first Sunday of November. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, second Sunday of November. It's a Sunday after election day. Okay. I want uh, Andy Dalton for president at this point. <laughs> You understand what I'm Is saying too right late now? To get him on the Are ticket? you understanding hey, what I'm saying feel, to you? Right I feel now? you. I feel okay. you. I feel you. But I'm being honest with you, straight up. That's the way I feel about the Giants. I would love to be pleasantly surprised. I have the Giants at 500, and the Carolina Panthers follow up their win against the Vegas. Yeah. Uh, against Vegas to uh, handle their business. Uh, okay. This weekend. All right. Well, I would love that. Okay. As well, a matter of fact. Speaking of Andy Dalton, Rich. Yes, sir. I think you're going to get your wish. Andy Dalton is going to keep the Panthers from having a top 10 pick in the draft this year. Mm. So we're saying the red rifle starting until further notice, right? Yeah. Dave Canales said on Monday, he's our starting quarterback. He gives us the best chance to win. And I don't think that's going to change. I mean, he pushed the ball downfield. Like we haven't seen Bryce young in a year and change. Look at that. Smile and face. Look how and happy that dude hair. is. He must have had the greatest Sunday night ever, dude. And again, on behalf of everybody at NFL Network that's got Carolina and the Giants, I'm sitting here saying, you know, we're going to raise money for his charity, just like the yeah, Buffalo Bills like fans, because he put the Bills in the playoffs, right? Yep, yep. He beat the Ravens oh, years ago. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Can you put up the Carolina Panthers schedule so I can actually take a look at? This I place? gotta say, because for some reason <laughs> I have the old. Uh, 20, I got. The, I don't know why I have a 2023 schedule <laughs> 2023 sitting right here. Great. Del Tufo, would you mind going to my uh, my position at the desk and bringing me the uh, the laminate? Thank you. So I got to say, this schedule suddenly looks a whole lot more winnable. It's the it's more the winnable Andy, games. It's the Andy Dalton tour of uh, places that used to employ him. Home for Cincinnati next. Oh, buddy, I I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. The Bengals have Chicago. looked terrible. You just come on, don't overreact. I thank you, Mike Del Tufo. Thank you. Um, home for Atlanta, Washington. So seven wins. It's seven wins would guarantee them not to be. Oh, in guaranteed top 10. not top Although ten. The Jets were, had seven wins and they were top. They were number and 10. they were ten. Okay, great. So seven and ten. Can Andy Dalton go seven and ten? I say yes. Oh, he's got to go six and ten for the rest of the way. Oh, he's got to go. He's got to go six and nine the rest of the way. Six and nine. Why not? Look, Cincinnati, Kansas Chicago, State. Atlanta, no. Washington, Denver, no. all winnable games. Giants winnable. I'm just going to push back on it. I'm sorry. I'm really? Sorry. Yeah. Top 10 is, I still think they're going to be top 10. Oh, I still think they're going to be top 10. I really thought you were a rifle believer. I am a rifle guy. Of course I am. And Andy, in terms, of Andy, Andy, in terms Dalton, of Andy, come on, man. Oh man. For sure. I'm just going to push back and say that's an overreaction. Uh, he looks so good. on I know. Sunday, I don't though, know. Dude. Again, as I mentioned, I, um, I might pick him up. Should I pick him up in fantasy? Dude, why don't you just, you sound like my third, you sound like Cooper now. What do you mean? Should I get him in fantasy? Well, I'm telling you, should I? Literally, a 13-year-old, you sound like my 13-year-old. Who watches one great quarter. Dad, should I pick him up? One great play, one great drive. Should I pick him up? He was great for 60 minutes. Yeah, go ahead and pick him up. He's back. He's back. Just telling you, he's back. Okay. 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 Game Time's got a new feature called Game Time Picks People that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. So basically what you do is you save time curating for your tickets that you want to get for sports, concert, comedy, theater, and more with Game Time Fix. So you choose the event, make sure you use Game Time Picks, and they'll end up showing you right away, filtering out the fluff, 
The incredible deals on the great seats you want, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And the all-in pricing feature, you get to see the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Plus, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork completely out of the purchasing tickets portion of your life with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use my code, our code. Sorry, Chris. Thank you. Overreaction for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Visit GameTime.co for restrictions. Again, create an account. Redeem our code O-V-E-R-R-E-A-C-T-I-O-N. So there's two R's in overreaction. You get $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Second half. Chris, what do you have over there? Second half, Rich. You know, before the season, I was like, ah, this is final of the year. Tom won sub 500, missed, yeah. the, missed the playoffs. How's that working out right Not now? great. Not great, Bob. Uh, I know they got a two-game lead right now in the AFC North. Uh, they're 3-0. and I think it's because of the guy, though, playing quarterback. Justin Fields going to lead the Steelers to the NFC North, AFC North title. I, I need to see what the Bengals need are looking like in the next two to four weeks before I can agree to this. I understand they got a head start. Okay. I get it. I get it. But at some point in time, somebody's going to be handing the ball to Justin Fields and say, you need a touchdown to win tonight. Right, four minutes to go, down five or whatever, and go win the game. Right. Right now, again, sorry to play the, you know, the card here of who they really beaten. Okay. Atlanta's a good one. Okay. That's a good okay. that's a good win. I think right. that's gonna be a good win Agreed. down the year. Yeah. Denver, that one improved. Yep. But, but TB- Bo Nix was TBD. still getting his sea legs under. Okay. All right. And the Chargers, who just spent a week out on the East mm-hmm. Coast. And Justin Herbert leaves during the game. But you have to beat who's in front of you. And they have not only beat all of them who's in front of them, but they they beat them up, man. They they are hitting you. The I defensive think, side I of the think, ball is yeah. is ruling the day and best, allowing best defense and, in the NFL. And allowing them to not put the whole shebang on Justin Fields' yeah. shoulder or or uh plate. Okay. And so to say they're going to win the AFC North right now because they got a two-game lead. Uh, I, I mean, I know I the second half of the year is the second half of the year schedule is really tough, but I this is what we were talking yet. about before. If they could manage the the front half of the schedule, I mean, nobody thought their Steelers were going to be three and zero out of the gate. Come on, uh, I agree with you, but I thought they'd be like two and one or or one and two. Sure, three and zero is a vast improvement. And they've got some um, Sunday night games at home against Dallas and the and the Jets. There's a, a and the Giants are coming in. They're going to Vegas. I mean, that, that I, I gotta say, before like, bye, and then if, they're if at we're Washington. being honest, we're talking six and two, maybe at they worst. Can, no, they, they heading sh- into the bye week. There are, as we would say, winnable games. But then the back half of their schedule is coming up where they play since they play all of their division games week 11 on all of them. And yeah. we've been saying over Loaded. and over again, that they need to handle their business before week 11 starts. Right. Cause it's all of their division games and the two non-division opponents that they play are Philadelphia and Kansas city. So that's a tough finish, but looking way I ahead now, suddenly and they're Cleveland, also, by the is, way, Cleveland is less than now, by the way. Okay. Uh, except you, you said last year Cleveland was less than, and then Flacco showed up, and they were a different team. True, true. So what if Winston shows up, and they're suddenly a different team then? I, I can't. That's okay. why I'm saying to say right now it's an overreaction that right. the Steelers are going to win the AFC North. It's it's, and you know how I feel about Tomlin. I'd I love to say, I'd love to say, oh, I'm all in, I'm all in. But uh, Justin Fields, all he's got to do is just play out of, um, out of control for a split second, and then Russ might be in starting. And so it's a far, different so look. far though, Fields has been. Right. Fields hasn't done one of those, like, playing. let me run around, right. let me do something silly, and then land on my uh, wrist wrong, right. and all of that. He's, we haven't seen it yet. He's playing within himself. He also defenses. hasn't ripped off, like, one of the 60 yarders either. Not yet. Which he can do. He can. And that's why I understand you're saying what you're saying, but I can't sit here right now and say they're winning the AFC North. Thus an overreaction. All right, I'm going to send that to J.J. Watt. 
Oh, I think TJ's defensive player of the year right now. I, I agree with you. Okay. I think he's top five MVP at the moment. I think he would be an MVP candidate with Saquon yeah. Barkley right now. I think so. I think so too. I'm with you. Sam, yeah. and okay. Sam Darnold. Very good. Sam Darnold. Okay. All right. We have uh, how many? How many? Three? Right now. Right now. Yes. Right now. For three weeks. Yes. MVP Sam. Uh, we have how many three and O teams right now? We've got uh, we've got we've four, got four right yes. with the Bills pending as a, as Bills we, pending as, as we, we record this. Yes. A three and O team, Rich, is going to miss the playoffs. Now, before you react, I did a little research beforehand. Actually, I outsourced my research. I outsourced Jack Andrade, uh, lovely NFL, NFL Network. Network research. So you reached out to him. I reached out because I, I had a question, and he, he was he was kind enough to get back to me. Since uh, from 1990 to 2023. 124 of the 165 teams that started 3-0 made the playoffs. So that's 75%. So 25% have missed the playoffs overall since 1990. Now, just in the last four years, you're probably wondering, hey, what about when the 17-game uh, expansion? Yeah. Hey, do you want me to say? Yeah. Hey, what about when since the 17-game expansion? Rich, I'm glad you asked. In the last four years, it, it's such... Uh, 15 of the 17 teams that started three, and zero made the playoffs. That's, so you're that's saying eight. there's a chance, 12% chance in the last four years that a so three, and zero team misses the playoffs. It's cut it in half. Cut it in half. You said it used to be 25%. Used to be three out of four. Now it's 12. Okay. Which one of the three, and zero teams is going to miss? I think one definitely does. Um, I I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Now, Rich, in case you're wondering, Hey, is there anyone right now hey, that is current? Is there anyone right now that is Cur currently three and currently three and zero that has missed the playoffs that has before missed the, missed the playoffs before in the 17 game format in the 17 game format rich glad you asked 2021 carolina panthers who is their starting quarterback back sam then? Darnold. sam Darnold. they started three and zero and finished five and 12 yes, to miss did. the playoffs yeah, that's right this is why i push back about sam being also an MVP in 2021 the, the denver broncos were three and oh yeah. they finished seven and ten wow so it's been done pretty recently is that a drew lock situation Mm, good question. Okay. Seems like you didn't it. go that do you know that deep for research. No. Okay. But there you go. A three and O team's gonna miss the playoffs. Hmm. I'll buy it. I'm not gonna call my shot. No, oh, do it. Call your shot. I'm not. Come on. I would never. It's not the Chiefs. Let's put it that way. Okay. It's definitely not Let's the cost Chiefs. Them off. So Steelers? Possibly. I doubt it, because you know Mike Tomlin doesn't miss the playoffs. And as a matter of fact. All he does is I've make got, the playoffs. I've got stats for you. Oh, you got stats. Yeah, because I know it off the top of my head because yeah. I, I I had NFL. Th See, when you're the host of NFL Game Day Morning, Chris. <laughs> you have stats. You got to have, have stats. You got a lot in front of you, and then you retain a lot. Okay. Um, I'll stop talking about myself in the second person. Sure. I retain a lot. Um. So this is the fourth time the Steelers have started 3-0 under Mike Tomlin. Oh. Three previous times they made the playoffs. Okay. Now, I don't know if they made it winning the division. So, but they made the it. The fact that they've done it three times and made the playoffs each time under Mike Tomlin, who never, never finishes under 500. Right. He misses the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, but, but he doesn't finish under 500. Right, 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 right. Makes one think they're going to, they're in it. They're, okay. they're going. Seahawks? Seahawks? It'll be either Seattle or Minnesota. Or Buffalo if they, uh, I don't think it'll be Buffalo. on Monday night. Uh, I, I, I really don't think Buffalo is going to miss the playoffs. They start three and they're, they're going to make the playoffs. Yep. So Seattle or, 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 or Minnesota, Minnesota, if I had to call my shot. Feels like Seattle. Me, uh, you, you don't, you're not, they, now they, Seattle is the, who have they really beaten? Who have uh, they really beaten? All-star. Champion yeah, of yeah. September. Ring of honor. They're Just in, sticking with the theme of well, week I mean, three. As you know, Miami went the entire season with that label yeah. last year. Yeah, they did. Right now it's Seattle. Okay. And if they win a Monday night coming up in Detroit, which by the way, they have done last two trips. True. And crazy ass games. Yes. Yep. Where uh, one would say it's um, overly exciting to watch. Nice. I would say that too. Okay. Yeah, yeah I would say that as well. Um, then, then, then they remove that from the equation. Then after that, it's the Giants. So then we're back. And then they play San Francisco. How about that week six? Boy, San Francisco got to get healthy for that one, huh, buddy? You think? Yeah, I do. It, I is, do. Does McCaffrey play in that game? Probably not, right? I, why would you say that? They IR'd him. I think he'll be back week Dude, five. It's, he's got an Achilles, man. <laughs> like, yeah, it's called a calf. Connected the to the Achilles. What else, Chris? Okay, Rich. Last week, I was like, hey, you know, talking about your power rankings. Why aren't the Saints number one? 
They've scored at 90 bajillion points through two games and, right. you know, made everyone look stupid. And Derek Carr was MVP. That's why it's called overreaction Monday. Well, now <laughs> the Saints turned back into a pumpkin and they are who we all thought they were before the season. I don't know. I think the Eagles actually had an excellent game plan and they executed it. How about that? How about I that? I don't, I don't like that. That's well, too, I mean, that's I don't think anybody level. thought the Saints were going to score 40 points a game this year, Chris. No, Did you? But, but, I, no, I thought they were going to get their coach fired and Derek Carr would be out by Halloween. Well, I know you thought that. Well, now I think it again. Okay, very good. You're back because come on, man. They are who we thought they were. No, I mean, uh, 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 New Orleans is going to have three weeks to show that the first two weeks were not a fluke, and next up for them is a monster game at Atlanta because Atlanta can bounce back from that loss to the Chiefs where they thought they had them and then they didn't by making sure New Orleans doesn't win on their turf, which you know, this is the most underrated turf war of the National Football Ooh, League. These guys hate each other. Very much so. And then they're at Kansas City on a Monday night and then home for Tampa. So there's two huge division games wrapped around a visit to the defending champs. And then Denver's coming in, and you might sit here and go, well, why are you pointing that out? Well, that's the return of Sean Payton. Mm. On a short week. And if Bo Nix is showing up in the uh, home of an NFC South competitor <laughs> in the same way he just did this week, that's going to make that game highly interesting on Prime Video. So I'm not going to say they've turned back into a pumpkin and they're who we thought they were before the season. I'll just give a tip of the cap to the Philadelphia Eagles okay, for showing up and playing defense. And uh, the the Saints just had two moments on defense that uh, even if even if they took one of them away, they still would have won. If they prevented Saquon from ripping one off for yep. sixty five, or Dallas Goddard for ripping one off for Dude. sixty, I couldn't believe that. Yeah, I didn't think he had the wheels. Did to, I? To I didn't think that, the yeah. Eagles could do it because Devontae Smith was out. Yep. At that point in time, AJ Brown didn't play. Yep. They were in trouble, and so. Um, I'll just I'll just call this an overreaction All right. for the moment as well. All right, two more. Yes. Last week I said uh, Malik Willis was going to go undefeated <laughs> as Packers uh, starting quarterback. Okay. Two for two. He is indeed. Rich Malik Willis is going to be a starting quarterback somewhere in 2025. I I don't uh, I wouldn't push I wouldn't push back on that either. He's put some good stuff on tape, and he's at uh, he's at a he's showing that the school of quarterbacking that uh, he's attending right now. Anybody from the McVay or Shanahan tree, Dude, you're, right? it's a school of quarterbacking, right? Sure Shanahan, is. McVay, Kevin O'Connell, Brian Callahan, Zach Taylor. They seem to be having that uh, reputation. So somebody that's got a good run game, a good defense, and has a coach that can keep coaching him up, why not? Why not? And in the same way that Sam Darnold went to San Francisco and got, you know, a cup of coffee and an, enough of sitting in a quarterback room of a professional outfit that can really coach you up. Uh, I wouldn't, I, I, I kind of dig this one. Do you think Tennessee uh, has Willis regret? <laughs> WR? Yeah. He's, do they have WR? Oh, is, there a, is there a pill for that? Good question. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. They're probably sitting there going, who's that kid? Yeah. Don't know that kid. He's not recognizable to us. He was in their building like a month ago. At all. They traded him August 27th. <laughs> like, dude. And here we are recording this September 23rd, and there are, let me get this right, as of right now, seven undefeated quarterbacks in the NFL. Mahomes, Allen, Darnold, uh, Fields. Geno. Geno. Andy Dalton yeah. and Malik Willis. <laughs> Crazy. He, he's been remarkable and 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 good for him, but he has shown that he can take the coaching, absorb it, execute it. Yep. And um, yeah, that should go in, in some good standing. If if there's an opportunity for somebody like that, New York Giants. Raiders. Raiders. I like that one. I like that one. Maybe so. Maybe. 
Okay. He's got some more growing to do, but I, I think he'll be in the conversation. Yeah, I agree with you. I think sure. You're right. I think you're right. All right, Rich, last one. I don't think that's an argument. Uh, last one. Now, last one. Uh, can't uh, be. A lot of people's uh, Super Bowl picks before the year, including me. We were premature in anointing the Texans, uh, the AFC team to dethrone the Chiefs. Uh, there was a lot of anointing going on. <laughs> so much after last I called week. them the 49ers of the yeah, uh, AFC. Yeah. yeah, you did. I don't know. I'm going to toss this one Man, out. they got their tails kicking in Minnesota, man. And, and they showed that, you know, you can get in CJ's grill yeah. and you can rattle him. He looked rattled. Like we and really hadn't have, seen. But Tunsil got so many pre-snap penalties and then those illegal procedures and all of that stuff. And that one gorgeous throw that Stroud had to Tank Dell got called back by one of those illegal formation penalties. I'm just going to say this. They're really good. You can look at their roster and agree with that. I think so. I think they're AFC South champion good. I think you can make that case, okay? So I will, for the moment, take this game and bury the tape or bury the result. Can't bury the tape. You got to learn from stuff. Right. Certainly if, you know, defensive coordinators, man, they are, you know, evil geniuses. Mm -hmm. And Rod Woodson told me again, the most adaptive, adaptive organism in sports is a, an NFL defense. So somebody's going to take a look at what the, the Minnesota Vikings just did Certainly, if you're Jacksonville, once they're done with the Monday Nighter, can they replicate that? Can they come up with the ability and the scheme similar? And then after that, Buffalo. Mm. Can they dial that stuff up? New England, Green Bay, so on and so forth, because that's the tape. That's the scheme. If you can run that and play it like that, then the Texans are going to be got. One would think, unless Stroud can figure it out on his own and adapt on his own way, and clearly he's shown an ability to do that. But uh, I, I still think when it's all said and done, the, the Texans will win the division, will have a home playoff game, and will have a chance to take on the Chiefs. I kind of feel it. I believe it. I still think they're that good. I'll just take it and throw it out. But that... That's something to throw away. That was terrible. That was terrible. I got smoked. Uh, I got smoked. I wasn't even close. That was one you had it on the multiview. You're like, all right, we can get rid of this. Any given Sunday, bud. Sure is. That happened. Okay. It's now time to predict what we're going to overreact to the next week. I got one right. You nailed that one. You said oh, the Chiefs and Saints. Were, no, 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 uh, no, no. The Saints and Bucks Saints and are going to go to the playoffs. Both win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they both got. Uh, Absolutely. No, one of them got yeah. punked. The Denver Broncos punked the Buccaneers. They really sorry. What, what was that? That's not, gonna, that's not gonna get us on I know, the Bucs not gonna social get us on the media feed. But, but what was that, man? I don't know. They also they were out they were without Winfield, they were without Vita Vea, they were out yeah. Cancy. They they didn't have some really that was impressive. defensive players. I mean, players. Uh, Bo Nix kind of showed Broncos, me a little bounce back. Right, that the was Broncos nice. took it to him. What's nice. your prediction? My okay. mine was that we'd be overreacting, overreacting to, the to the Cowboys. And you're right. Okay. Okay. Mine this week. We're all on the Houston as being the team to, 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 to dethrone the Chiefs. That's what you just said. Uh-uh. After the, next week, Rich, it's the Jets who are in the best position to unseat the Chiefs in the AFC. Okay, so they're going to take care of Denver in such a convincing manner. Absolutely smoke it. Hack it revenge game. So they're actually going to take it another step up. Yeah, further. yeah, yeah. They're going to do what they did against New England. So and Rodgers really is, put personally, Rogers is personally going to... Okay. Fantastic. And we're all like, oh, are the Jets the best team in the AFC? Okay. Can they take out the Chiefs? I'll buy that. Yeah. I'll buy that. Uh, here's one for you. I might be premature on this one, but it's going to happen, and it could happen this coming week. If the Rams do to Chicago what we just saw, ah, okay, and Pittsburgh goes into Indianapolis and goes to four and zero, and that is, oh yeah, baby, do it. The Bears should have stuck with Justin <laughs> Fields. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're <laughs> I'm so going there. we're so close to that being like a national. We're we're we're, we're inching. Take. We're inching. We're inching. Although, like, come on, man! Like Caleb had three hundred sixty yards. I on know, Sunday. but that, those are all empty calories in so many different ways i guess 52 passes it there's not no, sustainable there's, but there's no there's but. it doesn't look 
like there's any rhythm or any sense they of way really, they want to go yeah. about it. They couldn't block for their running game. And, yeah. and so it's, you know, Caleb doesn't look like a guy that is reading things and dissecting things and ripping it to the guy that's open because that's what's directed for him to do by the defense. He just looks like he is absolutely freelancing out there. Yeah. And part of that may be because he's running for his life. Part of it is he's still learning. Part of it may be that Keenan Allen's not out there either. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But uh, it's coming. It's coming. You're right. If he doesn't look that great and Justin it's Fields coming. is starting to, you know, if Justin Fields becomes the last undefeated quarterback oh. in the league, which is still a possibility <laughs> as we're talking about right here. And DJ Moore is going to want to trade to Pittsburgh. We should start laying odds as to who is the first member of our profession that would go in this direction. It's got to be someone on FS1. I don't know who it is. For yet. sure. Yeah, it's somebody. Uh, whose career after three games are we more overreacting to? Feel uh, uh, Caleb or Tom Brady? <laughs> I thought Brady was. You were. You didn't I, hear I, it. I didn't hear, in, I didn't were, hear were, it. You were at the, whose house were you in? Uh, Rams house. Right. It was the Niner house. Brady, for Brady, Brady's getting better each week. He is getting better. Okay, good. He's getting better. Good. I'm curious to go back and, and watch and listen. Yeah, Bra Brady's getting better. Okay, good. But, so I'll <laughs> say we're overreacting to Caleb's more. Okay. Even though people are overreacting to Tom's. Big time. I know. Like, what was know. he thinking? Stick to ownership. Tom, Tom has some moments of being honest, like brutally honest. Oh, he was. I saw a clip going around. He was utterly disgusted with the one Dallas play. Well, well, one moment, Dak was coming out of the pocket and dropped the ball. Like hit the ball. I think either hit it from his left hand or his right, and the ball went down on the ground. He just nobody touched him, and the ball he fumbled it. Oh jeez! And Tom's like, you know, some like I guess he's he's trying to be optimistic a lot. Uh -huh. and he's just like, you know, sometimes you get really comfortable in the pocket, and you know, you drop the ball. Although it didn't happen a lot with me, like <laughs> something similar like that. And 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 uh, Burkhardt even caught it. He goes, really? You didn't? I don't think you dropped it. But he goes, yeah, it may happen every now and then. You know, like. He tried to cover All for right. it, but he's just basically like, yeah, that shouldn't happen. You know, it's three games for both these guys. Okay. Okay. Good stuff, Christopher. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, week three. Uh, what the football with Susie Schuster and Amy Trask, Marshall Falk is this week's guest nice. to just keep the hall of fame uh, Love streak going. That comes out every single Tuesday. Uh, and then of course there's this overreaction Monday podcast every single Monday. We greatly appreciate you taking this in for Chris. I'm rich. See you next week. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.